Yeah, know? we wanted to design mm. an album that was meant for two people, yeah. didn't we? Like it was it was never meant to be a record where one of us was guesting on someone else's song. It was yeah. it was really written from the ground up for two people to sing. I only hope that I made you smile. Maybe more than once in a while. It was different to come together and learn how to write with each other because we write so differently as well, don't we? We're sort of We're totally different. We write like kind of like our personalities, I think. Like one's I, I really like... loud and his <laughs> is really quiet. No. We love Graham and Emmy Lou, and actually, the way that they sing together when you don't know really who's singing a lead and who's not, and the way they intertwine their voices, that was a big inspiration for the writing of this the, record. That technique, yeah. Of the writing Gillian of this and record. David, Graham Very and Emmy Lou, that they were probably the two biggest influences as far as um, you know the sort of duos go. Smoke don't rise, fuel don't burn, sun don't shine no more. Rattle and Bones was actually the first song that we wrote together and it was, it filled me with a lot of confidence that song because I was really nervous about co-writing together for lots of different reasons. I just haven't really done much co-writing at all in my life and it sort of always scared me a little bit doing it with anyone. And sh like Shane has been one of my favourite songwriters since I met him, so uh, I was a little bit intimidated by that. Even though he's not overly intimidating person, but just as a songwriter, I can be intimidating. <laughs> you wish. <laughs> left my home and left my love. Caught on a rusty nail. Devil rolls up, heavy with. On the sweetest waste of time, we have the pedal steel coming against my dad. He was really involved in this whole process, wasn't he? Mm. Because we wanted to strip everything back, play it all live. We wanted it to be, you know, very traditional sounding, but, you know, with sort of a modern edge to it, I guess. And he, yeah, yeah he's just right into all of that sort of music. And yeah, I think out of the band that played on the record, of all them, musicians that played he probably understands the kind of music we were trying to make more than more than anyone anyone else yeah Wind don't blow through the trees I like sort of having a lot of people around us when when we're in the studio and um, you know that whole live sort of feel we we all set up in one room and you could hear everyone else's instruments through everything there was no going and fixing things later and we sang all our vocals right there next to each other and and that was a really important thing but with the songwriting side of it I think we just really like to lock ourselves away just the two of us and do that Wildflower was actually originally one of the first tunes we wrote together for mm. the album, very old, early last year. And we Just wrote, after Rat on Bones, I yeah, think. Yeah, we wrote the tune and we couldn't find lyrics to fit it for quite a mm. while. It was Christmas Eve so we were all hanging at home and, I mean, I guess I went and locked myself in a room and left my family on Christmas yeah, Eve. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Thanks for that. We opened your presents too. Yeah. <laughs> but I started writing it about our little boy Arlo, who's, who at the time was about six months old. And it was kind of like a message song from me to him, you know, a father to son kind of song. And that's how it started out. And then um, I kind of wrote that, wrote it that way. And then we sat down and kind of Changed bashed it, it into a yeah. shape, being more of a guy girl, guy -girl kind, of kind of song. Yeah. But I've always still thought that's my favourite song because of the, yeah. the genesis of it, because of the idea. If I don't ever let you. We recorded this record um, in Jimmy Barnes's studio and um, that doesn't have really anything to do with anything except I just really love to name drop Jimmy Barnes whenever I can. <laughs> Very nice of them, they let us live there and it was just really nice to kind of get lo lost in the whole record and live the record rather than just showing up in the morning and then leaving at night. Yeah. 
It was cool. We were in Jimmy Marks' house. <laughs> it was rocking. It was really, really cool. Went through all his stuff, you know. That's <laughs> Uh, this next song, actually, Sleeping Cub, we, I remember when we did this, Shane um, got an old rubbish bin or something like that. And got this drumstick and I'm just bashing the hell out of this, this uh, you know, flower pot. It was sounding great. I thought, this is going to be cool, this is great. And we got to the end of the song and, and it stops and I hear Nash in my headphones from the control room saying, OK, I think it's going to be great. Let's just do it again from the top and we'll make sure it's in time this time, you know. And I said, there won't be any redoing it. This thing is like completely massacred. It was just crumbled. <laughs> we kept it, we took it home. We didn't want him to see yeah, it. Yeah, well, not only did we break his stuff, we stole his stuff too. <laughs> He had this line, monkey on a wire, that he just loved and he was trying to squeeze it into all of these songs we were writing. Every song we were writing he'd go, oh yeah, I really think monkey on a wire should be in there. I'm like, well, it doesn't rhyme and it doesn't make sense, but you know. <laughs> and he'd go, all right, we'll try the next song and then he'd try and get it in there and, and it just wasn't working. In the end I just said, why don't you just go and write your monkey song <laughs> somewhere else? The idea that, yeah, almost anybody would, would give up there's probably one thing in their life that they would give up anything to get and I thought of it as this little fragile monkey walking across a balancing wire. I don't know why, um, it was just this concept I had in my head and I was determined to write a song with that in it and it was just something phonetically, I liked the sound of monkey on a wire when I said the line and sometimes that's as deep as songs need to be. You know? <laughs> Monkey on a Wire. Yeah, upstairs. Yes. And I came down and, and I came downstairs and you'd written Devils Inside My Head and you played it to me. But, you know, it's a fast bluegrass song and it's got a couple of country girl yodels in there. And as soon as she did it, I said, Oh, that's right, I remember. Shit, it's Casey Chambers. <laughs> I forgot. That's who I'm married to. Because <laughs> when we write together, none of those little country girl yodels get three. Oh, no, no, yeah. Shano yodel. sifts no. them out very quickly. <laughs> Even God himself couldn't blame her now One more year One more year Let's hold our breath and give it just one more year One more song? year is um is my favourite song on the record, actually. He wrote it for his next solo record, but um, I just loved the story and I loved everything about it and I really badly wanted to put it on this record. So we came to an agreement that, um, you know, if we ended up in divorce, that I would have the song, he can have the kids. And <laughs> it seemed, seems fair to me. <laughs>